Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. Alright, we've got a couple of stories for you today. Sequel stories, dun dun dun. Kinda, yes, I mean yes. they both really are. First up, Daisy Ridley is open to returning to Star Wars. This is kind of an interesting one because we know Finn has pretty much slammed that door shut in Disney's face. Has he, though? I mean, he has said and some pretty... Oscar, Oscar Isaac has said he won't come back unless, he gets, unless he gets a house. So he's waiting for that check. But, but Daisy, on the other hand, is open. Now she is. Because she's. they've all kind of flip-flopped a little bit, haven't they? Except for Boyega. Boyega's been the one like, you ain't Disney plus in me. He's been the He's been the most adamant about not coming back. He really has. I can understand his his concerns yeah, he and got, trepidations. He got he, screwed. I mean, they all got did. screwed. Got some poorly written characters, or could have been done better. I know there are people who like the sequels who love these characters. That's great, but let's be let's be real. The, the sequel trilogy, these characters should have been better overall. As we know, Daisy Ridley, who you know, of course, played Rey in the sequel trilogy. She's recently been in the spotlight. Not Star Wars related, though. He, she was attending the Sundance Film Festival, where her latest film, Sometimes I Think About Dying, premiered. True to form. Whenever any Star Wars actor does anything at all, they, they get, get asked about yep. Star Wars. Like, that's the only thing anyone wants to know. Hey, I know you're here for this other movie, but hey, what about Star Wars? It's so true, though. I think that's why, like, a Harrison Ford, for example, wanted Han to die, because he didn't want people to ask him, like, when are you doing Star Wars again? Back to Daisy Ridley. She did an interview with IMBD, where she was asked whether or not she would like to come back to the franchise. She replied, I mean... I'm open to a phone call. I'm looking for employment. And the entire time she said that, she was grinning ear to ear and smile, you know, laughing, like, smiling. Please hire me. It was yeah. it was a little desperate. There's a video. But, Maybe you can put the clip in for him right here. Do you think you'll ever revisit the franchise at some point? I mean, I'm I'm open to a phone call. I'm I'm looking for employment. I mean, to be fair, I think a lot of times she does the big smile and grins when she's getting interviewed. She does, but there. I mean, I'm not saying she's, like, begging for work. I don't want to say that. But she certainly seemed very, I mean, that seemed very open to the idea to me. I mean, what are your thoughts on a return for Ray? Uh, depends on the writer? <laughs> well, it does depend on the writer, but it also depends on what you're going to do with her. It, it would exactly. obviously be post-sequel trilogy, mm -hmm. which completely canonizes the sequels, which for some fans, that's a, that's a non-starter right away. Well, there's no way around it. I know we don't, as much as... As much as people don't want them to be canon, it's the never going to happen. I, are that they are, and Disney's not yeah. going to back up, down on that. No, they they're never going to admit defeat with the sequels. They haven't ever acknowledged that they think there was a problem with them. They haven't even hinted that they think there was mm -hmm. a problem with them. Even though we don't see any merchandise for them anymore, we don't see much in the way of stories involving them. No. They have kind of been ignored, so they have indirectly said maybe they're not as exciting as we hoped or they just or wanted good. to give a cool down period like yeah i think so too prequels there were some parts of the prequels that were not loved but now well, yeah. years and years later we're like hey the sea girls maybe they're hoping we'll just eventually warm up to them well clone wars i think helped the prequels for some people kind mm -hmm. of made them a little better i'm not saying that was the answer for everybody or that's the only thing that the clone wars did they were good in and of themselves and i know there's always talk in the can the sequels be saved by a clone wars-esque show maybe I don't, I don't i think there's a lot more that's a lot more of an uphill battle i think the prequels laid a really good groundwork i mean the pre i like the prequels so don't care so that that helps me too i really enjoyed the prequels but there was a there was a really good foundation of a story there was there just wasn't time to tell the whole story whereas with the sequels the story is the problem i think you'd have to be kind of fixing the story and a lot of people are going to say I, I don't want you to fix this it's garbage just erase it and try over Part of me wonders if they'll do something Disney Plus related for the sequel moving forward. I don't forward. think they would make a movie it, with Ray going for. I, I think that would just not... I think that's too much of a gamble. Whereas a Disney Plus show with Ray, and it's accepted and good, then you might look into doing movies. I mean, she did a different interview with The Wrap where she admitted she was keeping up with a few of the Disney Plus Star Wars series. Wow. Saying, I haven't watched all of them, but it's just because of timing and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, the work everyone's doing is amazing. I worked with Pedro Pascal, and I was like, this is really cool. He's the Mandalorian, and I find it's all very exciting. She did add that she was definitely going to be watching Mandalorian Season 3. Who isn't going to be watching Mando Season 3? Um, like like we talked about know. yesterday, that is, that's just transcendent. There are people just going to watch that and love that because it is, it's its mm -hmm. its own thing, and yet I, it's Star Wars. Though, to me, honestly, Ray coming back to Star Wars feels like a win, not an if. 
I think it's, I think like it's a, a win. It's a matter of time. Because they're going to try. They're going to try whether you like it or not out there. Or maybe you love it. Like I said, the Ray has her fans. They're going to try. Well, if you recall, we did a story months back now. Late 2022, she did post on her Instagram that she was at the Lucasfilm headquarters having lunch. Oh, that's right. And it's not the first time that the rumors say that she has been back there. So they're probably in discussions with something. Well, the team at Lucasfilm Perhaps. are currently hard at work putting together a new film. Supposedly the one from Damon Lindoff and Charmaine Obadiah Chinoy. You know, one that supposedly. supposedly takes place post Rise of the Skywalker, but... You know, I mean, who knows for sure. It's supposed to go in production as soon as this year sometime. I mean, this could get announced at Celebration. The new next there film has to be. series coming is what this is hinted to be, is the next trilogy that will follow up the last trilogy. There has to be an announcement at Celebration for a film. And Otherwise, what are you doing at this point? And Seriously. according to The Hollywood Reporter, characters from the sequel trilogy could appear in those films. So we're getting a Ray trilogy. No, I did not say that. I think you said that. I think that. it's going to focus on an entirely new cast, but they may not leave them out. They, they're they going to be the legacy background characters. But I mean, aren't they no. legacy characters now? I mean, why? You could say they should have just made a sequel trilogy right after the original trilogy of Star Wars, like when they were all kind of in their prime. Why wait, you know, 30 years to do a Ray, you know, make her trilogy? Why, why not just have her do a trilogy? We'll and I'm see. not saying... I'm not arguing for the Ray trilogy what, as much if, as I'm saying, they, like, you have them now, just do it. Do another trilogy with these well, characters. What's to say that if they if make this next series and they do do a little bit of a, a past Ray and everything, and who knows how far into the future exactly they'll set it, maybe it's an older Ray, maybe if she's well received in that way, maybe they'll go back and go, well, here's that in between you wanted. Yeah. It might just be a testing ground because they know that the sequels went over with very mixed reviews. Yeah. I mean, one of the problems with the sequels is you didn't do enough with the original trilogy characters. So why would you then kind of repeat that mistake? All right, we'll move on to the next story today. We spent longer than I thought we would on yeah, this, well, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting topic because we know something's going to happen with the sequels someday. Mm -hmm. And there's a good chance if you're going to go post-sequels, you, you have to acknowledge Ray Skywalker. You can't just pretend All right, we're, mo we're moving happen. on, though. I said <laughs> no, we were moving on. Damn it, I'm sticking to it. So the Galactic Star Cruiser... Disney's rather expensive Star Wars hotel has slashed prices. With We're a slashing lightsaber. prices. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Halcyon, which opened March 1st last year, about so close to a year ago, you know, the $5,000 stay hotel. For two people, for two nights, yeah. It's slashing rates and attempts to increase bookings. The Galactic Star Cruiser, keep in mind, only has 100 rooms, but apparently, according to the reports, has been struggling with consistent mass c max capacity bookings. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. There's a, well, we're also, the economy's yeah, not doing so great. I was just so say, great. there are a lot of reasons for it. It's not just that I, it's the sequels or... Well, and COVID kind of had its impact on hotels as well. I think... I mean, even the, the hotels that, in the, in so the Wisconsin Dells, which we talk about sometimes. Yeah, where we... I get emails that. all the time from some of those hell, hotels that are like, 30% hey, off, 50% yeah. off. So yeah. it's not just Disney having a problem. Smaller hotels are having a problem. I think that's problem. more economy than COVID, which I guess is related to COVID, too, you could say. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. The Star Wars Cruiser, if you remember, has the uh, immersive journey where guests become part of the Star Wars story, interacting with costumed actors and sent on missions. There's a canon story with performances, a trip down to the theme park, a roster of activities. The cheapest stays for two people were supposed to be like $5,000 a couple and like 6000 for our family of four. Guests are required to book two nights because of the storyline spans two days. Yeah. But many guests have complained that the experience seemed cheap for the sky-high prices and didn't reach those expectations Disney promised. Yeah, people call it like a bunker because there's no windows and there's no pool yeah. or workout room. Yeah, yeah. Or... Uh, for something that's supposed to be a luxury, yeah. no pool, tiny rooms... The window thing that you get a screen to show instead of a window yeah. makes some feel claustrophobic, even though they have a garden area that's <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, no fitness amenities. It doesn't have things that normal luxury hotels are. This is this is booking. What this really is is like going to book a stay at the medieval fair. It is. It's. I mean, I this think is, some people really like that. But... Role play experience. Certainly, some people really like it, but I, I don't think the average person wants to kind of role play for two days. Mm. People Maybe. even complain about blocked views at the dinner show. Like, there are spots that they have tables that have obstructed views. Well, that's lovely. Because people are, you know, finding out that their assigned table has a 
like a pillar in front of it, obstructive views. <laughs> like when you go to the baseball game and you're like, hey, yeah. here's my... Oh. Usually those seats are cheaper. Those are obstructed view seats. Yeah. Most stadiums they've kind of dealt with. Those are like old school stadiums that have those problems. Mm-hmm. New stadiums tend not to have the crappy seats so much. <laughs> they just don't put a seat there at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, that's just uh, that's an empty space. Yeah. It's an empty space. All right, so with these surprisingly slashed rates, in November, the company announced discounts up to 30% were made for the Disney Vacation Club members. It's like their timeshare program, and they get access to a lot of deals, but 30% is a huge deal even for them. This month, though, they've announced a first-ever Galactic Star Cruiser discount for the general public. Even I got an email that's like, hey, please come. come. I'm like, I'm not traveling right now. Sorry. (laughs) What does that mean? I don't know. Right, but guests with a reservation to the Star Cruiser can get a discount of up to like seven hundred dollars if they book accommodations before or or after their Star Cruiser visit at another participating Disney World hotel. Like the biggest discounts were like three hundred and fifty dollars per night for like okay, here you can package up going to the Star Cruiser stay with additional nights at the Beach Club or the Grand Floridian or like the Yacht Club resorts. The offer is valid for stays between February 5th and September 30th. Wow. There are some blackout dates, obviously, bigger holidays and such. But as of yesterday, only President's Day weekend is fully booked until mid-May. I don't know. (laughs) It's it's just kind of nuts. And I mean, I think the problem is not... It's a discount, but you still have to book more stays at more hotels. To try to put it in a nutshell here, I think the problem is the price. You have the economy is not great. Mm-hmm. The handful of people who really, really wanted to do this and can afford it have done it. And yes. they don't have a necessarily a reason to go back and do it again. Well, there is so much involved to going on a family vacation. Well, sure. There's but you, travel, even just the, the average Star Wars fan. Yeah. Like, we're huge Star Wars fans. I'm a, I'm a gigantic Star obviously. We're both gigantic Star Wars fans. And I don't really have much of an interest in going. Oh, I do, but... I know you do more than me. Like, I don't want, like... I mean, I'm not. I like role playing. Obviously, we played D and D yesterday for crying out loud. I don't mind that sort of thing. I think it's fun. But when I go on vacation, I don't necessarily want the. I talked about this before. I don't want an itinerary. I don't want to have like special missions. I just want to go and relax and have it be what it is. And I think they kind of maybe misjudged how many people want to go on a vacation that is very structured like that, where it's like a. It's very odd because, like you said, if I go on vacation, I want to do things to my own schedule, my own feelings. Yes, I might go, okay, well, here's my schedule. This day, this day, this day, I'm going to these parks or going to do this. But it's still very lax. Like, I get there and I go, well, this is what I feel like doing. Yeah. Which, I mean, Star Wars-themed hotel sounds awesome, but until you're like, well, you're going to have to do this at this time, and then there's this at that. I don't want well, that. A lot of people have suggested a Where's scale back to make a Star Wars-themed hotel rather than a role-playing, performance-based experience where, okay, here's your hotel. It comes with maybe one booked you know, dinner or, you know, breakfast or something that does have a little Star Wars cantina performance type deal. But I don't think it's night. I don't know. I don't like the idea of having my entire time go, okay, well, this is the time I can go down to the theme park. But other than that, I have to be at the hotel because I've got to go to my lightsaber training and my space bingo. (laughs) And those should just be things you can just go and do whenever. And if the little, they can have little missions that start at X amount of time if you really want to do, I don't know. Just seems like it was a really, it's a poor idea from concept. From concept, it sounded interesting, but they moved into guess, the territory yeah. of it's, it's not just a hotel where I can book one night, get my whole Star Wars experience on, and then go on with my day. I agree. Maybe in concept, I guess. I'm, I'm wrong. In concept, I think it's an interesting, fun thing, but in, in practicality, when you're actually having to think about, do I really want to go there and do this? Well, and it's another thing, if I, if I live in Florida and I can go and drive there and yeah. do that experience, but people who are coming from across the country to go to your hotel... I'm probably also going to be like, well, I'm also going to Disney while I'm here. And well, yeah. I'm also doing this, which are expensive vestitures on their own. Yeah, we're we're in Wisconsin, so that's that's a hike to get down there for one. We mm-hmm. would if we're gonna go to Florida, we're gonna make a, a trip of it, right? We're not Absolutely. just gonna spend Disney two Universal days and come home. There's so many yeah. things down there to see. So to have just one thing the ocean. Yeah. So to have one thing that costs, you know, five to six thousand dollars just right out you know, right out of the gate which before costs, we've even got there I, and crazy, planned yeah. anything else, that's that's well, a lot of money. And they've committed two days of your trip there yeah instead of going okay well i'm going for x amount of days and now two days are here and now i have to move all my stuff from this hotel to this hotel i'd rather just book all at one spot yeah i'd rather just go to one hotel instead of like i'm gonna go there for like a night and then have to move to somewhere else Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's just i don't know it's not my cup of tea exactly 
But you still want to try it. I understand. That I would you rather try it be a Star Wars themed hotel that I could like book for a week and do something tells all me the other parks and stuff. I want soon to enough, see. it will be. Soon enough, it's going to change and be something. Yeah, different. but there's still only a hundred rooms there. They may have to scrap it entirely and rebuild on that spot. Well, I think they would just re, you know, do some kind of new construction and change it up a little bit. I don't know. I'm I'm sure they're not going to just you know chalk it up to a loss. All right now, we'll try to very briefly fit oh, yeah. in. You Sorry, knew this I've week in Star Wars, today. etc. You got me all, all excited Wednesday, about Ray. We've got Ray's return. I'm Bad so Batch episode <laughs> five. And for comics, we have Dr. Afra 28, High Republic The Blade, number two, and Yoda, number three. Friday, we've got a new episode of Vox Machina for anyone who is watching the Critical Role D&D based series on Amazon Prime. I just watched the first season. He did. He finally made it. He, he started liking it and then was like, oh, uh, let's go. Let's watch almost, more. Yeah, I did. Let's watch more. He appreciates it from a DM standard. Which is very interesting. I thought, to watch the world building and watch how the characters are acting within the what world. What it and, reminds me of, and maybe we should do a review. I don't know. Maybe you'll, if you made it this far and you want a review of Fox know, Machina, Fox season, Machina, season one. Fox season one. It reminds me of the DM who puts all his time and effort into creating the world, and then you have the players that just kind of they treat it seriously it yet not treat it seriously at the same time, and they, they stumble don't treat and bumble it seriously until the DM forces them to. Yes. That's kind of a good way to put it. <laughs> it's very interesting from that perspective. Yes, it's it's interesting watching because you can almost feel like this was written by a DM who has had some frustration with their players at times. <laughs> and on Sunday we've got the Last of Us episode three. Yes, which we saw episode two last night, which was good. Mm-hmm. So far, so good. All right, well that is all we got for you this time. So take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of any and all of today's news. What do you think about the return of Ray? Do you want to see her back? Do you want to see the sequels fixed? Do you want to see them scrapped? Or do you love them as is? And do you want to see them elaborated on? Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.